Okay, I have a corbel pattern that I've made. This was my original drawing. And uh, I didn't realize it, but I actually needed to have it in the other reverse direction. But that wasn't a problem because I just simply put it on my light table and then I was able to easily reverse it for the pattern part of it. And of course, reversing this part was easy because I just simply turned it over. Then this is the side piece for the corbel. So I've already traced the outline of my pattern on there. And now what I need to do is, because I want to carve a little indentation in it, I'm simply going to move the pattern over like this to do that. And I'm going to try to get this indentation, because that's marking an indentation just to get kind of carved out. Kind of like you would do if you had a router, but we're going to do this with hand carving tools. So what I need to do is I need to place this on here and I'm not going to measure this. I'm just going to eyeball this about the distance I want it from the, to start from the edge. And then I'm going to eyeball it on the second distance so that I have about a quarter inch of uh, indentation there. So I'm simply going to trace this. And some of those verticals I didn't cut out quite vertical, but I'll fix that after I do this. So because I know I could hold this fairly steady, I'm going to leave this one out because it's not quite lined up. And I will get that by hand. All right. It doesn't quite line up because there's a curve there, so it's not going to totally line up. So you can see that even here, it won't line up exactly. The deeper, the more curved that is, the less this will line up with that because you're looking at a flat space on a three-dimensional thing that's not carved out yet. So we are simply going to take the pattern again and just move it about a quarter inch from that line. Now, what I need to do is now I can put this pattern back on because I want to put this little kind of compass rose on there. But before I do that, I'm going to get my transfer paper out and I'm just going to put enough on there to uh, transfer the rose. And I have my little drafting circle tools here because when I was drawing the circle out, I didn't get it quite right. So I can just trace a couple of circles here. And the nice thing here is it has little guidelines. So actually I'm going to draw the guidelines in with a pen with a pen. And that way I can line up. If I line up one and line up two, then I don't technically have to do that side ones, but I'll do them anyways. Okay, and that's a real handy little thing to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw this circle out. So it's nice. There. And perfect. And then I'm going to my next largest size circle and line up my little marks here, 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 and here, here as best I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and quickly draw that out. And the reason why is because if you look at the shaded area, that's going to get carved out. And this will be kind of a ridge. And then there'll be uh, carving right at the very edge of this circle to bring that frame out. And then I simply have to just trace the uh, flower onto here. Now I could get all perfect and draw a perfect circle right there too. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. That one's a little bit large. 
We'll just put that one there. All right, that's good. So now it's perfect. Now, probably when we carve it out, it won't be perfect, but that's all right. So, and I can darken, go ahead afterwards, and I'll darken this, because this stuff doesn't, um, it's just a little delicate, wants to rub off a little bit. So there you go. That is this. And remember, this side's still going to be flat. All this curve only uh, is at the front of this core bill. The sides of the core bill are flat. So that's why you can do all the carving and everything on the sides. It's pretty easy. And then what you do is you take and you carve out these horizontal lines. It's just to, it's just, just to give it definition. And so it carries through um, the design that's actually three-dimensional on the front-facing surface to the side. So that's how that's done. And this corporal is going to be used as uh, a support for the end of a curtain rod. <laughs> And uh, I, rather than verbally explain that, I will show you in the actual uh, bathroom where that's going to be. So that's how I did the design. And it, you know, this was not my first design. This was my second or third one. So I was fortunate to get a design that I liked on, you know, pretty much the second try. And then I did go and I taped it to the actual place where it's going to be set up to see how it looked in realities. So that was nice to be able to do that. So you can see that's just a mirror image. And the other side of this, which is going to be three pieces of wood thick, so three times the thickness of that, so two more pieces. Uh, it's not going to have this rose on it because actually it'll be drilled out for the end of the curtain rod, so there's no sense carving the rows on that side. So this is just facing in the main part of the room side. And we just decided that we wanted to go all out and do something quite fancy. Tom is beginning to carve the room facing side of the corbel, starting with a knife along the lines. Using a small gouge, Tom smooths the groove which parallels the front face. The front face gets cut and then carved out later. Now Tom works on carving out the rose, starting with a knife along the outlines. The gouge is used to deepen and smooth the area around the rose. Depending on your skills, you may have to go back and forth between using a knife and various carving gouges. Use the square to cut the first cuts of the horizontal contour lines to keep them straight and perpendicular to the vertical back of the corbel. The pre-cut line serves as a knife stop for the approximately V-cut shape of the horizontal contour lines. On each of the three pieces which comprise the corbel, an easy way to quickly remove the excess material away from the front contour is to first saw multiple cuts 
just shy of the contour outline. To keep the cuts perpendicular and square, draw verticals squared also on the top edge with a small square. Then make the cuts with a sharpened and lubricated saw. Tom likes to use WD-40 to lubricate his saw blades. All these small cuts facilitate chiseling away of the excess material quickly and without accidentally cutting into the contour with the chisel. Using a mallet and a chisel, you can see how easy it is to cut away most of the excess material. It just flies off. And because of those cuts, it does not allow it to actually split the wood and go into the contour of the corbel. practice, you can learn to guide your chisel easily along curves such as those on the front face of this corbel. actually gets these curves very smooth and accurate because each of the three pieces that make up this corbel are each hand cut. When they are glued together they may not match up exactly. This however is not a problem as they will be carved as a unit to even out any discrepancies. Here Tom is using a smaller chisel and making refinements to the front face of this section of the corbel. Notice how he carefully guides the end of that chisel with a hand that's near the end of the blade so that he doesn't cut too much off. That's just part of your chiseling technique. And here he's using a gouge and that's just to refine it a little bit further.
At this point, the three sections have been glued together. The carved side is on the outside section facing away from the camera. Tom is using a chisel to even out any discrepancies between the three sections. Smoothing continues with rasps, using the coarser sides first, then utilizing the finer ones as the work gets more evened out. For the final smoothing, Tom uses a scraper. All right, my corbel is finished. The paint is dry and we have installed it right here. It is supporting a curtain rod and uh, I'm not gonna open that because there's another light behind there and that will blind the camera. But this was simply installed with two long, large screws with the T25 type bits. We pre-drilled the holes here and here and then we simply screwed it in to the support here, which is uh, the end of a wall, so it's quite thick with wood. And then I filled the holes with plugs, chiseled them off to match this curvature here and this curvature here, gave it a quick sand and then painted it. So there, I'm real pleased with it and I think it's lovely and I think I might want a couple more corbels somewhere else. We'll see.